Good. Yes, it's true that uh, thank you for inviting me to come here. And I sort of feel a little bit uh, different in the sense that I have a more an international aspect, perhaps, on the whole aspect. I don't see science as a race except for race to new knowledge. And I think uh, my, my objective for many years has been to try to create opportunities for scientists, particularly young scientists, to have opportunities to... Uh, uh, realize their uh, ideas and develop their uh, science, their own science. It's, it seems to me that we need to provide, uh, and that's one of the really serious issues I think that should be dealt with here, is the uh, ability for us to create opportunities for, for the young scientists to uh, develop their own independent programs. And, no, I'm very impressed by this uh, initiative taken to the era to create, try to synchronize and bring the European countries together to develop science. I mean, there have been some very striking successes, like CERN, for example, is something I, I think Europe is very proud of, and it has been very important for science all over the world in, in the physical sciences. And I think EMBL, uh, European Molecular Biology Laboratories, has also been very successful. And I think the commission, the, the, as uh, was mentioned before, e ERC, of course, has, in the scientific community, is, is looked upon as a, as a major advance in opportunities for science to uh, develop, to, to, for scientists independently develop their own programs. It's a bottom-up program. And I'm, through my experience in various parts of the world, I think uh, it's very important to see, too, that the scientist is a generator of the ideas, and we provide opportunities for a bottom-up program. We don't tell scientists what to do. We should try to let the scientists tell us what they think are good ideas and then evaluate their suggestion. I think that's, a, that's an es essential part. No, I have been, uh, I've spent uh, 50 years in the United States, so I have, I'm being influenced ob obviously uh, by my experience there and the success uh, since the Second World War of American science uh, in the way that it's organized and structured. So I think we have much to learn from that experience. I've also been involved in China, in, uh, in Japan, and in India, trying to develop science in this country. So, I think uh, that's why I come to the opportunity. It's not a race between different nations, but that it's a race to try to bring out talents. I think there are talents everywhere in the world, and for us, our responsibility here in Europe is to see that we provide opportunities uh, for the scientists here. And it strikes me that there are some parts of Europe, science is very well developed, and some Areas. It's not so well developed, and I think programs are needed to see, too, that we can also provide opportunities for, for uh, the sciences in, in the Eastern Europe, for example, uh, to also develop a, to a level that also uh, is uh, compatible with those in other parts. Otherwise, ERA will be not really succeed if it doesn't see, too, that all European countries are being equal and dealt with as partners. In a, in a balanced fashion. And how to do that is tricky, and I have a few suggestions uh, I'd like to make. Now, one, one thing that uh, I was in charge of Human Frontier Science Program, the HFSP, for nearly 10 years, and uh, I was struck by the fact that every year we got seven or so hundred applicants for postdoctoral fellowships from all over the world. And 60% of them, and the latest figure is still true, 60% uh, of the students want to do with the United States. And if you look over the years, nearly over 50% of the students who go to the United States stay. So this is not brain circulation in my mind, this is brain drain. And we have to see too that we provide opportunities for the students who go abroad to come back. Why they say is because there are job opportunities in the United States, there are better funding, uh, etc. So, and if we don't create better job opportunities, better funding for, we are going to continue to have this very serious brain drain because the people who tend to go to the United States are often the very best, uh, the most talented. 
Of course, some of them come back later in life, like you know, in my old days, I returned to Europe. So there is a certain love relationship you have with your home country. But we must build on that love for the, your country to see that also we create the opportunities for, for, uh, for the students to, to uh, come back. And do, you are trained to do a certain uh, a kind of level of science, and you come back to your country, and, and you can't the resources aren't there, the funding isn't there, and you have no colleagues to talk to. So you have to, this is a, a massive type of, you have to think about this in, a, in the long term, how to best do that. Now during my, my time at, as Secretary General of the Human Frontiers Program, I started the program called Career Development Award. So the students, having been trained abroad, many of them in the United States, if they decided to come back to their home country, they could apply again competitively for a research, uh, what I call Career Development Award. They would get $100,000 a year for, for three years in order to come back, to get a good job in their home country, and, and uh, start their own laboratory. And uh, I think that my hope would be that the Marie Curie system here for postdoctorate is a very good, excellent program. My, my hope would be that that program could be built up so, they, so one could couple with that a career development award so that the students coming back after training would be able to start to have their own uh, uh, operation. I mean, one thing that struck me, uh, and this is both in Sweden and in many other European countries, is how difficult it is for a young scientist to be, to be independent to have his or her own laboratory, see money, and get, just get to research. So in the United States, and one reason for the success, I think, in the United States is uh, there is a tenure track system. You are hired as an assistant professor, you get your money, you get your lab, and, and you can start to do your own programs. And this is when you are about 30, 32 years old. So this is very important to see that we, so once you are in a tenure track system, you know that if you do well, if you publish and do good research, you can then advance within the academic system for associate professor and then professor. So this provides a sense of that there's a purpose, there's a track here for me to, to continue. So as I said before, the independence is critical for, for, the, for the scientists. And, and uh, in many countries, uh, I remember we had an application, a uh, human frontiers program from Japan, it was a 40-year-old person who applied for, for uh, 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 independent uh, uh, for a position. And uh, he, he said that, uh, so, that he, the reason he now can apply was that he finally became a professor. So that's the first time he was independent. So, and I think that I have noticed that's not only in Japan, but also in many European countries, a similar thing that the hierarchy is still there, with the professor taking him or herself too seriously. And, and, uh, and uh, I mean, the, I think it's something wrong with the title assistant professor. It means as if you are an assistant or a professor, but you are not an assistant or professor. You are, uh, 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 completely independent, as it should be, that is, of that. Now, the other problem here, why, why students don't come back to Europe, is that job opportunities are difficult. Europe, Europe is, and this is my hope, that ERA will create a market for and job opportunities, not only in their home country, but at Europe as a whole, to see, too, that you get trained, you, and you actually can have a position to come back to. So this, I think... Is, uh, is, um. Now, one other passion I have had uh, through my uh, later years, at least, is to stimulate scientists from different disciplines to talk to each other, to work, cooperate, collaborate, and, uh, and so we, we uh, in the Human Frontier, we have a very interdisciplinary type of research, and I hear that here in the European Commission there is a great interest also to create programs that will make it possible for scientists to uh, work together. Uh, and I also created the program 
for a postdoctoral program for people with training in physics who wanted to go into biology that they could actually uh, cross disciplinary postdoctoral fellowship because it's very difficult if you're trained in a very in physics or chemistry and you suddenly decide you know I really want to learn some biology and go into biology it's very difficult to get uh, get that transition done and by having special money for people who want to to trans to have courage enough to say, you know, I want to try something new, and, and they should be encouraged to, to do so. Now, one, of, one other final thing I'd like to say is that um, the ERC is very successful, and uh, one of the difficulties is that this, it's a, it's a five-year program, and once that's over, uh, it's not clear that there's going to be continuation. I hear that it's possible to reapply for another grant, but again, that is still very young. What, what has saved, I think, uh, United States elite science is a program called Harvard Jewish Medical Institute. This is a grant where uh, the, the um, Harvard Jewish, is, have, they have a lot of money, and they, you are uh, at the Rockefeller, and I was president there, we had 10 or 15, 12, I think now, uh, Harvard Jewish Medical Investigators. They are paid by, they are hired by the Harvard Medical Institute, but they stay within the institution as professors. They are part of the university. They teach and are part, but they spend about 75-80% of their time doing research. But they are paid by the, by the institute and have research support from the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. So they are independent. My hope would be here in Europe that it would be possible to create something like that so that you got rid of all this structure of universities, all the politics involved, so, so that you actually could uh, select the best student, like the ERC, do, uh, you do a very good job in, in selecting very good students. You could use a system like that, select the best scientists, and then uh, they will be, be uh, part of, of this program. And again, at the Harvard Youth Medical Institute, a very serious reviews every three years, so it's not that you are permanent forever, so, and people are kicked out if they don't perform. But this provides an opportunity for Europe as a whole to have a really elite group of scientists that would communicate, they would become a community, and it would unify, I think, the, the, uh, the whole enterprise in, in the spirit of ERA. So these are some of the ideas, and I, I hope that you will take some of them to heart. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Wiesel. I think that uh, you have been pioneering many good initiatives which, uh, from which we could indeed uh, learn about uh, here, in, here in Europe. And you pay a lot of attention to the opportuni creating opportunities to the young, and indeed this is the cornerstone of the European research area as well. And uh, you were also mentioning the tenure track system, which is so much in use, uh, for instance, in the States. Maybe we could think of something pan-European tenure track system as well. Why, why, why couldn't we unite our so, uh, resources in that way too? And uh, the, the message to select the best certainly is something that, uh, that we have to remember when uh, developing the European research area. Uh, this uh, uh, brings uh, this uh, first uh, opening session to an end. And I think that uh, it became very clear that uh, European research area is at the heart of the European economic policies nowadays, and we have to act accordingly. There is an urgency, there is no alternative to error, and we do have to select the best. Thank you very much uh, for, for your wise words, and uh, uh, I'm very much looking forward to, to the discussion uh, in, the, in the further sessions. And now I would like to speak our, uh, to, to thank of our, uh, for our speakers uh, for their input, Mrs. Uh, Morakin Gin, uh, Hans uh, Peter uh, uh, Müller uh, Pedersen, and uh, Professor Wiesel. Thank you very much.